Tour guides of Reddit. What's the worst thing a tourist has ever done under your supervision? Led a scuba diving tour. While signing the safety waivers and all that one very old man kept telling us that he had a DNR. Do not resuscitate. We plainly told him that we are not bound to a DNR and if he passed out for any reason we would attempt to resuscitate by our safety training. Pretty much all the divers are assuming this guy is gonna kill himself down there. Prob spit out the reg and go quietly into the night. A dive happens. Pretty much everyone is hawkeyed on this guy. I see him go behind a large coral head and lay down in the sand and spit out his reg. He is only at about 60 featuring so I grab him and wrestle him to the surface. He will not take my backup regulator so I slam it against his mouth a purge air into his face. We get to the surface and he is fighting me non-stop trying to pull all of his gear off. I throw a very hard punch to his jaw and knock him out. Actually trained to do this during dive rescues to keep the panicked person from killing you too. Three weeks later and he tries to sue my dive shop and myself personally. TLDR. Guy tried to kill himself. WTF. Drown yourself on your own time. About 15 years ago, I worked as a deckhand on a line of boats that took people out to Fort Sumter. The trip was about an hour each way. One day, we were about halfway there and two teenagers decided it would be fun to jump off and try to swim to shore. This is in Charleston Harbor, which has a pretty solid tidal current, lots of boat traffic, and probably more sharks than one would like to think about. We ended up having to perform a water rescue on them, then continued on to the fort, with the coast guard coming and picking them up. All in all, an extreme act of stupidity. Was a kayak guide in Charleston last summer, can confirm, much more sharks than one would like to think about. I used to do vineyard and garden tours for a pretty well known winery. I had a lady ask to see any male ovines we had so I walked her over and she proceeded to dump ash all over them and yell we love you nana. Rest in peace needless to say you are not allowed to dump human remains on food goods. I should mention the ashes came out of a gallon ziploc baggie. It was a christmas themed one so maybe that makes it more tasteful. I'm a bush pilot in Alaska and occasionally do gladiator air tours of my boss asks. I'm not a fan of doing tours. One day I'm doing a glacier tour and had probably 7 people on board and the dude sitting next to just looks at me and says I'm the captain now and yanks the plane 30 degrees to the right and then lets go and laughs saying he was just kidding. There was yelling to follow via my mouth. Loki you're a child of god for not just knocking him out the second you landed safely. I work in the backcountry ski guiding industry, working my way to becoming a lead guide. Guests are always trying to kill themselves but here's one that stands out. Right now I mostly tail guide and pick people up when they fall, which is most of the time. One particularly deep day I'm sweeping a tree run and all of a sudden there's a man digging frantically in the snow towards a pair of legs. His wife had fallen head first down slope in a flattish area. When she lawn darted the first half of her body was buried in the snow and only her legs and feet were visible. Her husband thought it was a good idea to stand on top where her face obviously was and start digging near the exposed part of her body. I guess in the moment he forgot about human anatomy and where her head might be. At this point I was maybe 3 minutes behind them so she'd had her face under the surface for a while. I told him to stop and move. Yelled stop you're on her face. I tried added a couple expletives but nothing. I finally had to grab him by the backpack and power bomb him down the slope. I uncovered her face in under 10 seconds. She gasped for air, had a cry and then proceeded to tear that man to pieces verbally. Used to be a tour guide at a primate sanctuary with a strict no touching policy. At the end of the tour there's a suspension bridge. Tourists go first. Guide goes last as per the rules. I always warn the tourists that the other side is the territory of a Hanuman Langer and he doesn't frick around. Keep your distance etc. He doesn't attack people out of nowhere, but he likes showing his teeth and screaming, which scares tourists. Anyway, one tour I get to the other side of the bridge, and a tourist got bitten. He says a monkey just bit him out of nowhere. Asked the other tourists. No he tried to fricking pet the Hanuman. Dumbass got what he deserved. Was on a tour in New Orleans. Guy gets drunk and basically makes a fool of himself and slaps his partner. Everyone else on the tour is like whoa not cool, take a hike. 
GF leaves with him. Next morning they're all on the bus waiting to roll out to the next destination and we're not moving. 30 minutes later we're all getting pee off. Then the couple get on the bus looking sheepish. By the next stop we learn. The drunk guy ran a bath at the hotel. Passed out and he flooded the bathroom, and four floors below into the hotel lobby. The hotel wouldn't let them leave without paying thousands of dollars. Karma for him. The poor girlfriend, though. Not a tour guide, but was doing an English language camp for foreign kids. Took the kids on a day trip to London, which involved going up the London Eye. While in the queue, one of the kids started shouting that he had a bomb in his bag and he was going to blow everyone up. Almost got all 20 kids in the group kicked out. Holy balls. The kid is lucky he's not still in jail. On an open top tour bus in London, woman tries to dangle her toddler over the railing, then starts saying she's going to complain to my manager when I told her to stop. Corto doing it again and company policy said that anyone endangering their kids like that was to be removed from the tour, so the driver had to come up and march her off. She still insisted she did nothing wrong. Like, she literally had the kid's feet on the side rail of the, moving, bus and was just holding him loosely round the waist. One low hanging tree branch, of which there were many on the route, and that kid was gone. I was working on a tourist island in Australia when this man pulled out almost all the back feathers of a peacock because he wanted to keep one. He sneaked up behind it, and grabbed a huge handful and yanked them all out. He was immediately escorted off the island. The peacock had a huge bear patch and most of its beautiful feathers were gone. I have never seen peacock enclosures that didn't have feathers on the ground. So it's doubly bad because if the guy had just been observant he probably could have gotten feathers without harming any of the birds. I used to work at a heritage site. It was an old military installation with a lot of remaining original structures. Bunk beds, cafeteria equipment, computers etc. Every day it was a constant effort to remind people, read, kids, not to jump on the beds, not to slam doors open, not to punch every button like it owes them money. The absolute worst was a group of kids on a school trip. Within the first 10 minutes we're walking through the tech portion of the exhibit, where we had a wall lined with Burroughs large systems machines, B5000s, all behind this little fence about waist high. I turned to demonstrate some of the pieces, and when I look back at the group one of them had jumped over the barrier, opened one of the units and started pulling out handfuls of digital tape from the reels inside. I just about jumped on the kid when their teacher did just that. She jumped the barrier, smacked the kid's hands and took him outside. I immediately ended the tour and had them all refunded, as I couldn't imagine what else could happen. Awfully nice of you to refund them after that. They took a big crap in front of the group. So, we tore through streets and parks and make it really clear that the toilets at the beginning of the tour are the only ones for the first 90 minutes of tour. We get to a park about 30 minutes into the tour. Not a big park mind you, it is basically a big roundabout with a swing set, bench and two trees. I'm in the middle of my spiel in the park when I see a guy at the back of the group, step away, pull his pants down and squat on the grass. Of course I was stunned and lost my flow which had everyone looking around only to recoil in horror as this guy drops a log like it was nothing. He wasn't even ashamed. Open defecation is far too common in some countries still. Then they do that caveman garbage when they come abroad. Folks, I don't care what you do in your home country, but if you go visit a country with ample toilets, you freaking use them. I work at a brewery tap room and take people on brewery tours. During fermentation CO2 is produced and excess comes out through a runoff pipe and into a water bucket. One of the attendees, who was being a pain and trying to be funny but nobody was laughing, asked me what the pipe was for, so I gladly explained. He then asked what would happen if he breathed it in. In disbelief of his stupidity I told him he would pass out damage his brain. He then proceeded to grab the pipe and take a breath. He was then ejected and barred. Some people are just beyond belief. Not my story, but co-worker's story. He was a tour manager for South America. We tend to work with the more older travelers, 60-ish and above. 
him and his guests were flying from Lima to Cusco, Peru which is about 10,000 feet in elevation. This is a group of around 40-ish travelers. Apparently, he had one male guest who had ibs or something, and while in mid-flight chat himself, the stench was unbearable as they are all in a small aircraft carrier taking them to Cusco so high in the mountains. He said he had to help escort this guy to the bathroom in the back, but as he stood up, the crap just came down his leg, so now, he's dragging crap with him to the toilet. Once he got to the toilet, he cleaned it up with the assistance of the aircraft attendant. He was very embarrassed, but not as embarrassed as the guy who pooed himself. Once they landed, this guy who shat himself is in the bathroom, apologetic, and was cleaning himself up. The guide went into the airport and bought him some new Peruvian style pants and then came back to the airport to help dress this guy in the bathroom. I would say that was probably one of the worst stories I have heard happen to an individual. I have also heard of a fellow co-worker who guides tourism in Vietnam, had to bail out a tourist from jail one time. She received a phone call in the middle of the night from him, in jail, asking for help. She showed up and asked the man, what happened? The Vietnamese police said he was caught purchasing Viagra and exchanging money for prostitution. I worked at a living history farm museum. I had a kid that was climbing on stuff the whole tour in the farmhouse and trying to get behind the smith in the blacksmith shop during a demo. After the tour when people are allowed to roam the grounds, I hear his mom screaming and look over to the barn and this kid has climbed the fence into the field with our longhorn oxen and is trying to poke them with a stick. I walk over and calmly told him to get out of the field before our lazy oxen decide they've had enough, but this jackoff decides to look me in the eye and smack Ted on the butt with the stick like it's a riding crop. Ted, bless him, just kinda jumps a little and whips his head around with a WTF dude look on his face, but seeing as he's a long horn, he just wipes this kid out with one of his horns when he turned his head. Kid goes flying into the dirt and is having a meltdown. Mom is freaking out. I'm like dude, get the heck out of the pen before Ted actually gets mad. So this kid is crying and trying to climb the fence out of the field and Bill, who has been watching this whole thing waits until the kid is almost over the fence and walks up to him and nudges him in the butt with his nose and pushes him off the top of the fence. It was everything I could do to keep from laughing. Kid was fine, Ted was fine, but the kid and his mom were promptly kicked out of the museum. Their dad and little sister were allowed to stay because she was well behaved and was just enjoying petting the goats at the petting zoo. So since the kid had to leave but his sister didn't there was a temper tantrum in the parking lot that could be heard all the way to the other side of the farm. But the oxen got some extra grain that night. So I guess they won in the end. Took a class of middle schoolers to a museum and one of my butthole students dragged his hand across a 3000 year old Indian painting. Later on I found out the object was almost certainly a reproduction but I nearly died of rage on the spot. Thank everything that that was a reproduction, though. Not me. My best friend's tour guide on an island off the Australian coast he saw one of the tour ignore the huge signs warning people not to go to the edge of the water. Predictably the tourist gets hit by a huge wave, swept out to sea. I know it was the worst thing the tour guide ever saw because he and my best friend both went into the sea to rescue the tourist, and they both died. Funniest guy I ever met. Miss him most days. The tourist who caused it all? Predictably he survived. Pretty sure he doesn't feel too good about the whole thing. Jesus dude. Sorry to hear that. This made national news and it's tough to hear it straight from somebody who was so close to the victims. I once was a tour guide in high school for a group of young Chinese students coming to the rural US on a sort of fresh air trip. They told us beforehand that we had to keep the kids away from water because apparently parents don't value swimming lessons in China and there is such little open swimmable water that no one learns on their own. We were also told that the kids think swimming happens naturally, like if you go into water, you'll immediately start swimming. Anyways, one of our excursions was to a local reservoir and the plan was to hike up a hill nearby to overlook the reservoir lake, get a few photos, and then leave. When we got to the top, it started pouring rain like I had never seen before. I'm talking so much rain you can't see 5 feet in front of you. Then lightning starts striking the lake and I'm still trying to keep it cool even though I had never been so close to lightning before. The students were taking it well and laughing, which was good, until they started running directly for the lake and jump in. 
Apparently they had also never learned about electricity conducting through water. So I'm freaking out and start pulling them out of the water. They weren't in very far, and a couple of them complained that their phones were wet. In the rain. No one got hurt, but it was a crazy day. We got back on the bus and the kids started drinking liquor in the back. They ranged ages 9-16, and I had to bust them for that too. TL. DR. Apparently Chinese kids think swimming will just happen if you go in water, especially lightning struck water. Well that is awesome that you'd get those kids out. I couldn't get myself to go near that lake if there was that much lightning. Tour guide at a university. We got a lot of guests that really, really don't want to be there. Mostly misbehaved kids from a poor area of the city. We too radio at all times, even during finals week. As many may know, sound can travel oddly in and lecture centers. Our lecture centers have windows around them, and like 6 kids thought it would be hilarious to smash on the windows. From the inside it sounds like gunshots are being shot from outside, or at least muffled gunshots. Watched 100 plus students flee the classroom during their final exam. We got a lot of crap for that. It isn't easy corralling a group of 30 plus students. That's the chaperone's job. I watched a man run up the side of the platform the winged victory statue is on in the louvre and throw his arm around it for a photo. Security got him down pretty quickly, I'm shocked he actually made it up there. I'm in the middle of talking and someone's phone rings. Okay, that happens sometimes, and usually they just cancel the call or step outside. Nope, this guy answers the call and starts talking on the phone, only a few meters from where I'm standing, I think. Oh he'll just quickly explain he's busy and end the call. Nope. He starts a conversation. The rest of the group glare at him and I'm put in an awkward position because my workplace put a huge emphasis on politeness. So I suggest to him to continue his call in the hallway, just outside the room we were in. To which he replied no, I'm fine here, and went back to his phone conversation. I'm doing my best to talk to the rest of the group, about 25 people, but he's so loud. Eventually this Chinese woman yells across the room at him shut up, we want to listen to the lady, not you which worked, but I just couldn't imagine the nerve to ruin everyone's experience like that, cause you're too selfish to talk on the phone outside. Also, the place I worked allowed photos but had a strict no photos of the staff rule for privacy reasons. I always explained this at the start and 99% of people were cool. One day I had a particularly happy snapper who got right up in a staff member's face to take a photo, like I'm taking centimeters from his face to take a photo. The staffer was just some rando middle aged white dude, so I'm not sure why the fascination, but he was livid. It's like I saw it happen in slow motion so couldn't do anything to stop it. That guy was removed from the tour. I had a guest, snorkeling try and grab the tail of a barracuda as he swam up behind it. Luckily I was able to hit the guest with a dive fin from the boat to stop him before he got a hold. If he had grabbed on, I'm sure he would have been ripped to pieces by that fish. Couple of guys I used to play cricket with went on a school trip to Auschwitz and decided to steal a small pair of glasses and some buttons they found half buried in the ground. They were detained by Polish police while they were leaving the site. Hard to know what goes through people's heads sometimes. On the subject of Auschwitz, I work with a dude whose go to badass story is that he snorted coke while walking around Auschwitz. I've probably heard him tell 25 people or so the same story and every person kind of looks at him like he's a freaking piece of crap and then they try and change the subject. To this day I don't think he understands why no one sees it as badass. Not a tour guide but I guess you could say I work in the tourism industry. I work ground crew for a company that does helicopter tours. Number one rule for customers is don't walk under the tail boom, the rotor will kill you and IT will hurt. It's unbelievable how many people have a death wish out there. People see the fastest way to the other side of the helicopter and don't stop to think oh hey, that spinning blade may or may not slice my whole freaking head off let's see how close we can get to it. Tour guide boat captain in the Caribbean. We had about 40 stroke 50 people on the boat, got off. We would normally go feed swimming pigs which someone would get nipped from them from doing stupid crap but nothing too serious. Well the next stop after that was another island where we would hand feed turtle, sharks, and stingrays. 
So we would tell the people to hold it with the palm open and food in the middle for the stingrays and they would come over the top and take it out. The turtles and the sharks put it in the water holding it in the tips and when they are coming for it let go. Well of course, this dingus decided he would be tough and feed this baby shark. No longer than your forearm without letting go. Shark proceeds to bite his fingers. He screams and jumps up out of the water and flicks it off of his hand. Pulling one of his fingernails off in the process. So that's one I always remember. I used to give tours at my university. There was a group of middle schoolers I was giving a tour to, to show them why they should want to go college. Yatta yatta. There was this one kid who kept trying to sneak away and was whistling at just about every girl who walked by. Weird, okay, whatever, he thinks he's a big shot. Then a very attractive girl comes jogging by us, and he tried to grab her and starts air humping while he watches her run away from us. I was mortified. I ended the tour. I was done with him. The teachers didn't even care. That was probably the worst part. Didn't happen to me, but one of my company's tour guides was on a flight with a bunch of middle schoolers. One of the boys got caught jerking it, in his seat, next to a girl who wasn't even from his school. I don't know what to say. What goes through your mind at that moment that makes you think that's a good idea? Former whitewater rafting guide. There's a calmer section of the river people can, if they choose to, hop out and swim through. They are wearing life jackets so you can just float through it. This woman decides she wants to try it and hops out. After she pops up she slowly tilts forward until just the back of her jacket is out of the water and she's completely still. After 5 or so seconds of this I start to realize this might not be intentional and paddle over and physically pick her head up above the water followed by her gasping for air. I haul her in the boat and ask what happened. She said she didn't know what to do as she'd never been submerged in water before. 1. Why are you on a white water rafting trip too? Why didn't your strategy involve moving your body? The life vest can only help you so far. My cousin is a tourist guide and biologist. Most of his tours are in Africa. He instructed his group of 20-25 people including kids not to wear any type of earrings or collars especially shiny stuff since they were about to go into a thick forest to try to see a bunch of animals. This is very important because 2025 make a lot of noise which makes wild animals run away or hide. It's even worse if they are wearing shiny stuff they can spot from far away. Okay so this woman complains. Decides to wear shiny earrings anyway. Cousin tells her to get rid of them or she ain't coming with the group so she obeys but puts them on a bit later. Some species of monkeys in that area love shiny stuff. They ripped the earrings from her ears. I was on a tour with my family in Cambodia and we visited Angkor Wat. Now as everyone knows, Angkor Wat is teeming with tourists day and night. There was a long line to climb the back and basically the topmost tower, wherein the steps are very steep. It was a hot day and when it was almost our turn, a middle-aged man took two steps, fell backward and started having a seizure. People came to his help immediately. However, one man who was also crowding around him did nothing but pull out his cell phone and start recording. Thankfully, everyone noticed and started yelling at the guy to put that crap away. He acted like the victim though and he said he was just trying to help. What a tea. Imagine deciding to film a guy having a seizure instead of calling him a freaking ambulance. Sick help bruh. Definitely a tea. I was giving a tour of my university to the mother of a potential student. She tried to recruit me into a popular pyramid scheme and then, when I tried to change the subject by asking what she did in her spare time, she told me about her conspiracy theories that she gives public talks on. They included the dangers of Wi-Fi, 5G, and chemtrails, and that the moon landings were faked by Stanley Kubrick, who was shortly thereafter assassinated by the CIA and replaced by a clone. I cut the tour short. Felt pretty sorry for her daughter who appeared to think these theories were reasonable and had also been recruited into her mother's pyramid scheme at 17. Was on a tour of a small cave system somewhere in West Texas. It was really beautiful and right after the guide told us how long it took for all the stalagmites and stalactites to form she turned around to move on and some guy leans way over and snaps off a small one and shoved it in his pocket. I was so surprised I just stared at him and he smiled and winked at me like we had really gotten away with something and I was a co-conspirator or something. I think I learned this from Reddit. Give him a thumbs down.
They always look startled, then sad but no one has ever become confrontational. They usually slink off or avoid eye contact if they can't leave. I mostly do it to people who don't pick up their dog crap. Most will awkwardly pretend they meant to wander back. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.